This is Cybert signing in to General's Zero Hour on the map, Fallen Empire, and we have got a 2v2. Now this is of course North versus South, but it's also GLA versus China. In the North, as our demo GLA plain blue, this is Mandal. And their teammate as the Red Toxin GLA, this is Free. Maybe Freest or Free Street? Anyways, in the south, as the green vanilla China, this is Xcal. Always happy to see Xcal. Pretty much always puts up a great show, and he's definitely a top player in Zero Hour. And our fourth player rounding out our second team as the orange infantry China. This is Race. So China versus GLA on this map, north versus south, and of course... Fallen Empire being, I feel like, a pretty popular 2v2 map. I mean, back, you know, five, six years ago, it was a fairly popular 2v2 map, and I assume nothing has changed dramatically. I don't actually know when this, I didn't really check where this replay uh, came from. This is one of the ones that I tried casting at some point in 2020, but I was having some problems with Zero Hour not running properly, which hopefully have resolved themselves, and so this replay has been sitting on my hard drive for quite a while, but I don't actually know if it was a 2020 game. Tunnel does get shut down. That's great there for race, but uh, yeah, I don't know if this was actually a 2020 game or if this was like a, a replay from even longer ago. But who cares? If it's some great 2v2 action, that is what matters. Dragon Tank taking a bunch of damage in the middle. The Flamer almost going down, but not quite being eliminated by that technical. One tunnel on the right side, as you already saw, getting shut down. The left side did get set up there by Mandel. He has managed to establish that little bit of a foothold. Terrorist is going to be able to get the kill on a listening outpost, and the Dragon Tank will get not the rest of the Terrorist. Misses one of them just barely, and the final Terrorist does go down. Also, it looks like a, maybe another Terrorist drop by Free. Uh, with the technical. No, not going to be going for it. He decides, I guess, with the Gatling tank there, or perhaps just not wanting to hit that target. Maybe he thought there were mines or something. Didn't want to chance it. He does actually have a couple of terrorists in there. Unloads two of them. Going to be able to get the, I assume, should be able to get the uh, third terrorist, is going to get the guaranteed kill on that supply. Nicely done there. Also gets the dozer. x -Cal losing a supply in basically a like a two-supply map. And the listening outpost doesn't go down. By the way, yeah, I forgot to mention I was looking around at this map just a moment ago, but four supplies right there in the middle of the map. So really, you just have two supplies per player, and two of them are pretty centrally located. I mean, this is not that far from each other. The ones in the back are a little bit more protected, but as you can see there with Xcal, having the back, having the back supply secured doesn't really mean all that much if a Tekken if a technical with a couple of terrorists can just nuke it out of existence one tunnel on the front line going to be going down three dragon tanks here I don't actually know if the dragon tanks may have friendly fired down that Gatling tank just a little bit an additional tunnel going to be eliminated as well and this uh, tunnel that was over here has been shut down also so Xcal doing a good job of Pushing back Mandel, our GLA player is doing a better job in the first couple of minutes of the game, keeping the pressure on our southern team. But now Xcal starting to strike back. Race going to be joining him with at least one listening outpost, not necessarily a whole lot other than that. A second listening outpost going to be joining the fray, but uh, gets cleaned up there by a couple of the tunnels. I don't know that the... RPG troopers inside will be able to do all that much. Xcal continuing to push a little bit further forward. Tunnels under construction, but not finished up just yet. And a single scorpion tank going down. One flamer made its way to the palace, and the palace under construction gets canceled. Mandel being pulled apart here by Xcal. And Xcal. Uh, well, actually, I guess Race is breaking down the, the barracks, but Xcal with that one Dragon Tank doing so much against Mandel. Mandel has now been able to push Xcal back for now. Xcal turning around, a couple of Gatlings, a couple of listening outposts, going to be heading further south, and big quad push from Free Street. Free will be able to clean this up, but will he be able to do anything more with these quads? Sometimes players just like to play it a little bit more conservative and really go for the quad pop kind of a kill. 
not necessarily going for drive across the map kind of quad aggression. Instead, just going for the ambush quad moves. But we'll see. A single worker getting hunted by a RPG trooper way down here in the south, and this is, of course, an attempt by Free Street to try and set up a tunnel somewhere. He's not quite going to be able to do it, but, uh, well, actually, maybe the, no, the tank hunter does not get called off, and he will eventually hunt down that worker, I would think. Big quad army from free. Still just looking around, and yeah, unfortunately, it is not meant to be. No worker will escape for the current moment, but pretty much completely surrounded by mines and the RPG trooper. Going to have some trouble making anything really work. There's the quad pop, but it's a little bit too far away. In comes the technical. No terrorists inside, I don't think. As uh, the, oh, well, and all of the outlooks, outposts, excuse me, do get eliminated. The ECM tank, of course, not going to be doing tremendously well against this many quads. And only one quad really going down in that engagement race, getting completely shut down and destroyed. Free holding the front line. And with the kind of back position of this supply, that attack didn't even disrupt the income of our team in the north. They've been cranking away. The palace is up for Mandel, rebuilding that over in kind of a more center location. It just occurred to me that race actually looks quite similar to rage with the mixed capitals like that. I'm not actually sure if uh, race and rage are the same player or not. Command Center back up and running. Excal pushing up from the south. One tunnel does get dropped on by the MiGs. Firestorm does get created, and a terrorist on a motorbike drives right through it, killing himself. More terrorists going to be coming in, trying to shut down this attack, and one Gatling tank left, one Flamer left, and nothing is left free. And Mandel completely clear of that attack. Minimal damage overall. Losing a tunnel network. Not, you know, ideal, but definitely not the end of the world. Battle bus now out. Bunch of RPG troopers, or like the the bio RPG troopers inside of there, able to clean up one flamer very nicely. The battle bus does not survive that attack, and it will be stuck now there. And the MiG's even going to be coming in, going for the kill on the battle bus very nicely there. Tank Hunter's now going to be engaging with quads, and the quads trying to stay right on the edge of range, but... The armor facility, the war factory rather, may be going down. The arms dealer may be getting eliminated. If he can keep around the network, oh, he just barely keeps around the hole. So we won't have to rebuild, but it will take a minute to get back up and running. That beacon's still firing. Out. Oh, no, I guess this is a different beacon. Somebody's dropping beacons as they uh, really want to call attention to that point. Trying to re-establish potentially some tunnels onto the other side of the map. Already fires off. Not actually sure where this is going. Oh, he's going to probably try and finish off the... Uh... Well, the carpet bomb starts, but it doesn't quite get the quads. He's going to try and finish off the arms dealer. Or no, he's going to be going for the palace. Doesn't quite finish off the palace either. Gets a couple of the workers, but the palace stands strong. Still around. The MiG's coming in for another run. Jarman Kel going to be surviving for now. MiG's get the kill on the workers, completely denying any attempt to try and set up tunnels. Always nice when you're the China players if you can deny those tunnels from ever going up. And man, those shoes really allow those guys to get moving. Those, those shoes really make them quite happy workers as apparently they just move much more quickly. Dozer gets sniped and Dozer under construction. If one of our GLA players could manage to get a Dozer and then start a power plant on the north side of the map, that would be pretty phenomenal for them. But I don't know if it'll necessarily happen. There's a Dragon Tank, of course, with the Black Flame upgrade. Whatever that's actually called. Uh, the Purple Flame upgrade. I always want to call it purifying, purifying flame because that's what it's called in Kane's Wrath. But of course, that's not what it's uh, what it's called here. Dozer gets reclaimed. Flamer going to be saving that for now. And actually, the no, the worker almost got in there. Once again, a single tank hunter going to be trying to uh, trying to make something happen. And goodbye, free worker, the worker of free, not able to uh, make it happen. Uh, well, no, nope. I thought there was a black market going down, but I guess it did end up getting canceled there. MiG's coming in for a big swing. 
cleaning something up. And the worker was able to clear out a couple of the mines, but not enough to make a difference. Propaganda center hidden all the way in the back, and internet hackers for race getting set up. They haven't quite been told to uh, get to work just yet, but he's got his late game economy up and running, just worrying away, making him that money. And this map starting to uh, have some lines drawn in it, of course, directly across the middle with the uh, with the actual literal wall does provide that kind of structure, but also with this many tunnels going down and this many quads sitting right outside of that wall, it does feel very much like uh, this might be a tough stalemate to beat. Couple of Inferno cannons gonna be firing from the other side of the wall, but Jarmin Kell and a battle bus going to make this a tough spot to break. Couple of Terrasan bikes going to be coming in. They don't get necessarily a lot of kills as the listening outposts deal with them. And the Inferno cannons trying to clear out the front line, but that is a fully heroic quad cannon that just barely escapes. A secondary battle bus going to be coming in for Mandel and going to be trying to push back these listening outposts. Doesn't quite clean them up, but does kill one. Listening outposts need to be able to push forward, but the Inferno Cannons have just barely been able to clear out the ground to allow Race to step forward. And maybe not, as two Inferno Cannons get cleaned up by a terrorist, and once again, Mandel and Free clearing up another Chinese attack, and they are just having so much trouble making it any further than the wall. I thought that combo of Inferno Cannons and Listening Outposts was going to be able to make some headway, but it was not. Race losing absolutely everything in that attack. MiGs coming in. Do they get the Battle Bus? Barely it escapes into the tunnel, almost being eliminated, but not quite going down. Tunnel's going to be getting cleaned up, but not before the listening outpost goes down. A lot of tank hunters here to try and clean up these tunnels with the help of the MiGs, and the numbers might barely be good enough, but no, not with the Jarman Kell here. All of the tank hunters go. Two of the tunnels get eliminated. One of them completely gone. The other one reduced to a hole in the ground, but the third tunnel does still stand strong, albeit barely. Sort of a back and forth, but it's almost mostly just been for the last minute or two just defense from our team in the north and offense from our team in the south. Yep, German Kell cleans up more and more tank hunters. Two Jarman Kells, one of them double vet, the other one a little bit newer, a little bit fresher faced. And the ECM locked down the terrorist and the listening outposts kill it off. But two ECMs and two listening outposts, I don't know that that's going to be enough to make very much headway. Although two, uh, two Jarman Kells, if they get good snipes, could shut this down pretty quickly. Nice cleanup, a lot of those tank hunters going down. And there's the snipe of the many of the individual tank hunters. Of course, you have to turn one of them into the pilot of that listening outpost. So sniping the pilot gets you the guaranteed kill either way. Battle Bus steps out. Battle Bus gets away for the current moment and back into the tunnel it goes. Both ECMs are still here, so it's going to be hard for our team in the north to really break this apart. Scud launchers also here. Carpet bomb mostly misses, and the arty strike goes off as well. Once again, you go in for the palace, but the combo is strong enough to kill the palace. Any of them individually, not quite enough. Battle bus now going to be trying to hunt down. Gets the kill on the listening outpost, and the terrorist coming from the other side doesn't even need it. Isn't even needed to kill off those ECMs as free once again defends his home. MiGs coming in for another pass. They kill off yet another tunnel. Our team in the south doing a really good job of just keeping the front line further and further north. They just keeping they just keep pushing the front line a little bit further north and a little bit further north as our team in the north keeps trying to establish. Did that Scud missile just blow up on the bridge? I am, uh, I will admit I'm not the most familiar with generals, and I think this Scud missile just busted on that bridge, which is pretty phenomenal. Black Market going down. It does get completely eliminated there by that artillery barrage. So he did get the, uh, the guaranteed damage there. Okay, I think he had given it an attack command, and that's why it was up. And can he actually get at the launch? 
He does fire the Scud missile off, and he completely whiffs it way too late. The Scud launcher does go down. A nice attempt there by Free, but ultimately no good. One ECM and four outposts. This is, again, it's going to be tough for this to, uh, to get a lot of headway. Probably two ECMs, but with the MiGs, probably two ACMs would be better. But actually, with the MiGs, this is working quite well. First terrorist gets one kill on the listening outpost. No Jarman Cal to get additional snipes or to tank down the uh, the rocket troopers. So this is uh, this has some potential. Second terrorist doesn't do anything. This is a good start by race. If he's able to do a little bit more like that, ECM now going to be trying to keep the Battle Bus off of the Listening Outpost, and it kind of works. The Battle Bus eventually goes down. Two Listening Outposts do survive, and a couple of tunnels have been eliminated. The attack starting to fall apart. Xcal not providing a lot of support, and an additional Listening Outpost going down. MiGs get not quite caught. I thought those uh, quad cannons were about to explode, but no. Two of them do survive. The other two drive into the Firestorm and get eliminated that way. Carpet Bomb in concert with this RPG attack pushes the front line that much further back and has Mandel been broken. This combo of support powers and this little bit of an attack with the MiGs, was it barely enough? I love that supply steal by those trucks. Was that enough to actually do some critical damage to Mandel? Mandel, without much of a standing army, having taken a beating from some uh, some additional one clicks, but the command post, the command center, rather, not necessarily going to be going down. I don't know if the two scud storms are going to be enough to really change the face of this game. Although they could kill a lot of MIGs pretty much for free. One scud storm going off. Propaganda Center being eliminated. Would be uh, would be nice to get the Command Center and the Propaganda Center. Goes for the Supply. Gets a kill there. Another Scud Storm about to launch. Listening Outposts get the kill, and not even the Terrorist able to get the kill. Forcing to sell off of forcing the sell-off of the Scud Storm, the Black Markets. Race doing some critical damage here to Mandel. And Mandel, after that last attack, unable to really mount any kind of a defense for a follow-up attack. A terrorist could get some nice kills on the Tank Hunters, but uh, I don't know that that will necessarily be enough to bring him back in this case. Arms Dealer going to be potentially going down, and still Free hasn't found a spot to use his Scud Storm. Barely this arms dealer getting eliminated, but no, it does stand with just barely any health at all. Migs once again going to be potentially going in for another path. Keeping that arms dealer alive is great. Getting the command center would be really nice for our team in the south. Unable to break our team in the north. Already strike going to be coming in. And I assume it's going for the for the command center, but it could be going, I guess, for this. Arms dealer would be the guaranteed kill with an arty strike. And goodbye, arms dealer. Scudstorm still hasn't fired off yet. Airstrip rebuilt there on the high ground. Couple of flamers step forward. They get the kill on the command center. A great move there by Race. Excal with his MIG armies. And uh, Scudstorm fires off. Pretty good value for that Scudstorm, the airstrip and the uh, and the war factory. A couple of flamers ending up going down, but this is a lot of damage done to Mandel. Mandel with a barracks, and that is pretty much it. Yeah, Mandel is just about tapping out here. Got a couple of tunnels. The barracks, which, you know, it's fortified, so it's got that extra survivability, but this is going to be a tough one for Mandel. Additional command center going to be coming up for Mandel, so he did barely manage to get that one out, so he's still in the game. He can still use those support powers. 
Artie strike coming down. I guess it's going for uh, the arms dealer, maybe? No, for the black market. Gets the kill on the black market. Carpet bomb on a second black market. Gets the kill on that as well. But the command center is untouched by Mandel. Or Mandel's black market, rather. Ooh, Black Lotus in the north gets the cap on, or the forced sell-off, perhaps, of the barracks. But either way, the barracks is eliminated. Can the quad cannons get the kill on Black Lotus? Barely not enough time there. Black Lotus may be able to escape this one. I guess they're trying to trap her into, like, a corner. And the Black Lotus escapes for now. So close there for free. So incredibly close, but unable to, uh, to capture and kill Black Lotus. Additional Black Market's going to be coming down. The command center has been finished. Two and a half minutes left on the Scud Storm. Terrorists is getting called in. They may actually be able to kill off more of these hackers. Airfield being rebuilt. And uh, he got two hackers. Nicely done there. Utilizing just that final rebel to get the kill on those hackers with the, with the detonation. Two more listening outposts coming in from race. And the MiGs, of course, st on standby for XCAL. Once again, looking for that quad pop to get the maximum damage with those MiGs. It doesn't quite work out. Rebels, Toxin Rebels, going to be getting the kill on that outpost and get the kill on all of the tank hunters as well. Goodbye, tank hunters. As the Toxin Rebels do a pretty darn good job of cleaning up the infantry. I'm not sure what the plan is for our team in the north. Free Street with five grand in the bank. He's feeling pretty good about himself, but uh, nice detonation there. Does some damage to the listening outpost, but not quite enough. Second worker going to try and make it make his way to the south. Carpet bombing coming through. Cleans up, I think, a black market. EMP locks down a couple of these GLA buildings, the arms dealer and the command center, really. Another worker going to be coming out for Mandel. Tunnel going down on the right. Man, these suicide workers are actually, because there's no anti-infantry in these listening outposts, the suicide workers are actually semi-effective. Mandel just slowly but surely burning through the last of his cash, and I mean, he's only got 300 bucks left, so I guess he could sell off a couple of the tunnels, but he's doing what he can. Cluster bomb locking down, and uh, Black Lotus going for the cap of the Scud Storm. It's at zero seconds, and it's being forced to be sold off. Oh, Free Street unable to get the stop on Black Lotus. The tunnel is great over here on the right side. Black Lotus does eventually go down, and the Scud Storm gets restarted by Free Street. Tunnels get shut down over here on the right. Single uh, chem RPG trooper also gets eliminated. The listening outpost survives, somewhat surprisingly. Quad's going to be heading down to the south. Free, going to try and make some kind of a move here. It's probably going to be difficult with this many listening outposts and rocket troopers, but, well, the quad cannons turn around anyway, so no real damage done, no real attack. 
Race the only one at a, at max level. Everyone else just slowly creeping their way up to that amount of experience. But race the only one with uh, with maximum experience and maximum general level. Carpet bombing trying to clear out the front line. Quad cannon's going to be heading south. But uh, running into a bunch of mines could actually be a real problem for them as they try and make their way deeper into our southern team's territory. Three quads going down basically for free. RPG troopers deal with uh, a couple more quads, and only three quads manage to make it back home from that attack. How brief that assault was from Free, and at the same time, Free starting to lose his front line of defenses. This could be quite problematic for Mandel who does still have the command center and who does have four general levels. So he can be still a part of this game, but if he loses that command center, he's pretty much done in this game. He does still have a worker, but that's about all he's got at this point. Many gunners being dropped in the uh, in the back of the map to try and get a kill on a black market. Doesn't quite work out. A couple of more tunnels on the left side of the map going to be getting pushed back. And the quad cannons do pop out as well as the Toxin RPG troopers. And well, I guess a couple of them go down. But two listening outposts get eliminated completely as Jarman Kell also getting a kill on, oh, I assumed one of the listening outposts, but he didn't actually get the snipe on the vehicle. Two more tunnels may end up going down here. And this is just shrinking the map little bit by little bit for our team in the north. Quads are rebuilt, trying to find a better angle for the engagement. There's the kill on one of the listening outposts and the tank hunters inside of them as well. The ECM goes down. The worker also gets eliminated. And finally, this tunnel goes down also. One listening outpost surviving and just barely, hardly any health. And now this command center and this worker are literally the only thing that Mandel has left. Black Market under bombing and goodbye, Black Market. Scudstorm all finished up. Inferno cannons burning down the tunnel. And goodbye, this black market on the front line. Sells it off rather than losing it to the listening outpost and the Inferno cannons. Carpet bombing coming in. Going to be hitting a barracks, but uh, doesn't quite clean it up. Trying to get the kill on the on the command center. Can he finally burn it down? The Firestorm may be the thing that gets the kill, and Mandel has been defeated, so the command center just gets handed over to Free with the op with the... Uh, Quad cannons going for the kill on all of the all of the inferno cannons. Even a triple vent inferno cannon going down free. Doing a good job of defending his homeland, but ultimately it's going to get even more difficult. Losing more and more ground to these attacks from our southern team. ECM locks down a quad, and this Stinger site does manage to survive, I think, for a little bit longer. Yeah, as it gets constructed or perhaps reconstructed. Xcal continuing to make some good moves with the MiGs, and that's pretty much it. That <laughs> single MiG missile somehow getting all the way down to that bridge. Flamer for Xcal, the Dragon Tank, going to try and burn a path through the left side of the map. And again, just slowly... Anthrax bomb? Oh, I guess nothing. A couple of these support powers not quite finding their mark, not quite being able to uh, kill anything. But getting close. Quad cannon versus a dragon tank right at the edge of the firewall. And just barely the quad cannon dies? Barely. But then the tunnel gets the kill anyways. Secret Tunnel Network in the back of the base. Going to be able to clean up the MiGs, potentially. No race does manage to save the MiGs for now. I think they go down in the air. Yeah, they get eliminated there. But barely, no. E also, the airfield goes down. Everything getting eliminated there. Quite a good surprise tunnel network. And uh, even the quad cannon going to be going for a potential kill on the propaganda center for free. Wow, that's amazing for that single triple vet quad cannon before it gets eliminated. 
and not a lot of permanent damage done to our team in the south as Rage Race has a little bit of cash to try and rebuild that stuff. It's going to take them a minute to get the cash to get the uh, propaganda center, but he's already there, so not even all that bad. Oh, actually, I guess it's the propaganda center he started immediately. I guess he can rebuild the airfield whenever he wants, and the MiGs won't be that far behind. 40 seconds left on the Scud Storm. It gets hit by an Arty Strike and a Carpet Bomb, but the Quad Cannons are just out of position as they're dealing with the Dragon Tank. A great pull there, and goodbye Scud Launcher as it gets eliminated in just the right, uh, in just the nick of time by our team in the South race. <laughs> XCal just barely pulling that one off. That was a great distraction dragon tank on the left side, pulling all of the quads over there because, of course, if they don't, some of them don't go over there to kill off the dragon tank, the dragon tank will be able to burn down more buildings. But in that case, it was the perfect distraction. And at this point, Free is going to have a really hard time making this work. If he is able to pull something out of this game, that would be pretty darn miraculous. Another black market going down. Race trying to do more permanent damage against our team in the north. Another surprise tunnel going for the command center pretty much immediately, but the MiGs get the kill on everything. The Firestorm is perfect to eliminate everything that popped up out of that tunnel network and I think that was pretty much the entire standing army of free although he does have the rebel surprise as he gets the kill on two uh, listening outposts I'm not actually sure an inferno cannon and a listening outpost perhaps Jarman Kel burning down as he gets eliminated there and the tunnel networks falling perhaps one by one as free without really an army has been defeated. Race and Excal, perhaps Rage and Excal, but Race finishing with $13,000. You know, maybe 10 of that was while the game was actually still running, but that will do it for a pretty action-packed 2v2 that unfortunately drew out into a bit of a stalemate in a slow conclusion for that game, but still well played by our contenders. And in this case, Mandel exiting the game a little bit early and Free doing a good job of trying to hold on, but I mean, like I said, kind of a stalemate that fell out into uh, Free just prolonging the game without a real hope of making a comeback. Yeah, he had his support powers, but he never really had an army to uh, contend with and to get onto the other side of the map and actually do something with Wow, Excal, even though he was in the game considerably longer than Mandel, only 3000 more dollars collected, so I guess that explains why Excal was really just nursing those MiGs and trying to keep them alive and really make those his entire army, as uh, he did not collect very much money over the course of that game. That will do it for this very video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all very much for watching, and this is Cyber signing out.